Hi everyone, it's Anne here from Positively Papercraft and I'm back with the other card that I promised I would do. This is another card sent by a lovely lady called Steph. She sent the um, the one from last week, which was this one here. Now, I've seen some amazing uh, takes on this. It's been so lovely to see them and I do think this is going to be one of my favourite cards actually. I love it. Um, I just want to apologise because I didn't manage to get the measurements and things on my blog. Oh, honestly, I've had a crazy week. My website has just been absolutely insane. Um, I didn't, I just didn't expect it and I didn't expect how many people wanted um, my new die as well. So I've still got hundreds of orders to get out, but um, I will get, I promise, on my blog today, look under this video and there'll be a link for there'll be a post for this one and there'll be a post for the new one so I promise I will have them on this afternoon when this video goes up so this one I'm calling it a staggered angle card now it's two triangles but as you can see the staggered and that's because your little sort of spine or fold is staggered which when the card stands up it allows you to be able to see the back so when you fold it it's not just two triangles together you've got this staggered higher bit it stands up dead easy to make so we're going to make that I'm going to do it in a Christmas one of course you can do any kind I've just put just a note on here but yeah it's a lovely little card and I'll give you the envelope size before the video is finished so a piece of card which is 11 and 3 quarters by 6 inches. Score the long side at 5 and a quarter inches. 5 and 3 quarter inches. And 6 and 1 quarter. Okay, so you will end up with three score lines down the middle. Dead, dead easy. Now, away so a ruler and a pencil now you were going to draw a line okay on the right hand side from the score line to the very corner so just draw a diagonal line like that okay then on this side what you want to do is on the very first score line take your ruler and measure down from the top um, how much have I measured that one because I think Steph did tell me about three quarters but I think I've made mine bigger yeah it's about an inch and I like it like that so first score line measure down one inch or 2.5 centimeters and put a little pencil mark now from that pencil mark to this corner draw another diagonal line okay so this is what you should have you should have this staggered look hoping the camera's picking that up okay so you can either cut it with scissors or you can cut it with a trimmer now I've got something to share about a trimmer you know how I absolutely love the woodware trimmer um, and I do but I went on a website a few weeks ago and I found this which is by Nelly's Choice now you might notice straight away it's the same setup as the woodware um, what I like about this one though is it's slightly smaller but it doesn't alter the length because the arm extends but what's the amazing thing I discovered they fit the woodware trimmer and they have the straight they have the Victorian drop mine out the pinkin the scoring there you go um, they fit the woodware 
So I'm going to put the link for these um, and the trimmer if you want it. I wanted to try it because I like to have one upstairs, one downstairs because I do a lot of my, I do all my kits and website things upstairs. So I've got my woodware trimmer up there. But yes, if you're just looking for blades for your woodware, they fit and also the great cutting bar because this is what I've been trying to explain to people. This one has little lines on, um, but it fits the wood way I've tried it because I keep saying you get four uses out of a strip and this I think is trying to help you. So you've got number one like this. Now when this, this grey strip is used, you would just flip it over so you have number two up there. So that's two uses. Turn it over and then you will have number three, which is another use, and number four. That's what I mean. You get four uses out of a strip. But I think by putting the numbers, it's obviously they're trying to help people. But yeah, fantastic. Just it stores your blades in, just like the woodware. But I get so many emails about where do I find the different blades for the woodware. Um, Creative Expressions took it over, but they do have them, but it's only the straight but however, Nelly's Choice has brought out this, which they fit the woodware. So now you can get all the different fancy blades that I have. So that's just a little tip there. So I'm going to line these pencil marks into my little trimmer here. Did I put my blade back in? I don't think I did. I didn't. Right. Cuts beautifully as well. So that's the first side, all right? Now this side, again, line your blade up. But actually, I'll tell you the best way to do it. So get some scissors, all right? And what you wanna do, I'm just hoping you can see what I'm doing here. So I'm gonna cut down here to the start of where this pencil mark is, okay? Then I'm gonna use my scissors. It's easier than the trimmer actually, for this side anyway. Cut all the way. So you will end up with this, okay? All right, I'm gonna show you how, the next bit, I'm gonna show you how to get this, okay? So what you need to do is take a ruler and a pencil so this middle score line measure down one about one and a half inches and just put a little pencil mark the end score line measure down about one and a quarter inches and put another pencil mark so you should have that can you see there Now you want to draw a line from where we've cut to there and then back up to here. This is the easiest way to do it. So from here to the pencil mark, then from that pencil mark to this pencil mark. And we already have a line there for this from the score line. Can you see that there? So we need to take some scissors and we need to cut the pencil line there. Now start from the score line here. Okay, start from the score line to the pencil line and just follow the pencil lines. And that's what you will end up with. If you have any extra pencil marks, just give them a little rub out. And that's the, the, the hardest bit really. Now, for folding, start from the left, you're gonna have a valley. The middle one is gonna be a mountain and the end one is gonna be another valley. Now, so when you fold this together, it will go in like this. Okay, and then you have your 
stagger there. So when it stands up, you've got your stag staggered angle fold. So the rest is really just decorating. Now, what I did was to get the little different um, triangles, I made two and then I kept the cutoffs and I sort of made templates out of them. Now, you still might have to trim them a little bit, but that was how I did it. Um, and it wasn't too bad, really, but just maybe make a one um, from scrap paper and then just use, use them as a template. They don't fit too bad, actually. So remember, the smaller side is going to be the front. So I'm going to have... Now, I might still have a little bit of adjusting to do with these triangles. All right, so what I'm gonna do is just get on and stick all my little um, pieces of paper on and I'll probably speed it up. What I wanted to uh, show you as well was this time these little bits here I've actually cut a few little scraps and I've cut them to their half an inch so about um, I don't know three eighths of an inch and then all I'm going to do is take my pencil again and I'm just going to mark just slightly under the card and hopefully when I cut these it should fit there I think it's nice to have them bits decorated as well and um, obviously you don't have to but I just thought it would be nice to sort of you know decorate all of it really and then just slightly go under your pieces of card and then you know they don't have to be precise but just as long as they fit so I'm going to do the same on the inside and then what I did for the back so you can write a little sentiment you know a stamp a sentiment write a message I just again I cut another triangle in white so what I'm going to do is on the back I'm going to pop this here just so I've got some room to write a little message. Okay. I think it looks so much better with covering the uh, little folds as well. Beautiful. Now, as I said, I'm going to use my tree. I've cut it from like a copper sort of fancy card and just a white. But what I'm going to do is this white bit, I'm going to emboss it with some Debbie Moore's Print Magic. I love this stuff. Just to give it a really nice extra sort of sparkle. So I'm just going to use this and I'm just going to get my Versamark and I'm just going to start pressing it in to the ink. And then I'm going to cover it with the um, Print Magic. Now this is called Crystal. I just thought it would give a, you know, a really nice sort of extra sparkle. Okay, so I'm going to put this back in the pot. I will heat set this and then I'll be back. All right, so I've done that and I've glued it on. You can see the lovely sparkle on the white. 
from the print magic and I've just popped a few little foam pads on the back So I'm going to have my tree about here. Isn't that just so pretty? I think that is such a lovely card and something a little bit different as well. And then sentiment I had cut out. Seasons greetings. Now I cut these out in two colours because I was thinking about having it across in the middle on the tree, but you can't really read it then, can you? Or what we could do is do like a a drop shadow. Yeah, that's better. Yeah, I'm going to put mine as a drop shadow. There we go. That is so pretty. And I might just add... I've got some of these dream drops. Actually, they don't look very red to me. Mm, not too bad. I'm going to add a few of these on. we go that is beautiful so I will quickly give you the measurements for the envelope all right I'm just looking on my envelope punch board I've measured it you would need an envelope so the card or the paper you're making it from would need to be five and a half by six inches and um, sorry that's the card and your paper would need to be nine and a quarter by nine and a quarter and you would score and punch at four and three eighths okay so you need an envelope which is five and a half by six inches so a five by six envelope it would fit in that so i'm going to pop everything on my blog um this tree is on a huge back order but once I've done all of them, I will order more and hopefully in a few weeks I'll have more and you can order again because I, I am still getting people asking for them. Um, but I have to complete the back order first and then I will order some more. So you'll definitely hopefully have them before the end of the month. Um, the, the not these back orders, the, any new ones. So thanks for watching. Take care and bye for now.